It is the touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro, still hanging out with Ken Andrews. And now it is time for the fun zone where we talk about matters that have been happening and some of the games that will be coming your way this afternoon. Big game, two minutes in. Everton versus Liverpool. The Merseyside derby has actually kicked off and we'll be following that to see how it actually pans out in that one. Some of the games that will be coming away at 5 p.m. We've got Brentford versus Leeds. Chelsea West Ham is a big, big clash. That one, Newcastle, Crystal Palace, Nottingham Forest versus Bournemouth, Tottenham, Fulham. Wolves will be playing home to Southampton. Then we'll be finishing the day with Aston Villa versus Man City at 7 30. But let's discuss Everton Liverpool. Big game coming up. How do you see that going, going Andrew? I think uh, Liverpool should get this game uh, over the line. I think yes. they have not been in very good. Uh, they have not been like themselves uh, yes. the past season, but they are still better than Everton. Mm -hmm. They still have a better squad. Uh, Nunez yeah. has served his ban and is back in the squad. And on the other hand, Everton haven't really, really hit the heights. People yes. expect them to even after signing multiple players, great defenders, but they have still not managed to gel and, and have a proper game under Frank Lampard. So. I expect Liverpool to get the game, but yeah. Everton are home also. So yeah. Big loss for Everton, losing Richarlison to Tottenham, actually. Mm -hmm. And also, there, I think, Anthony Gordon also going to Chelsea. Last season, they were suffering from... They, they really struggled to stay on top of the Premier League. It's a season that, if they do not work really hard, they might be relegated. Yeah, yeah. and you know, this is a season where... Most of the teams have really, really invested in their squad, yes. invested in the coaching, so they should be really careful. A team like Everton shouldn't yes. really be be in the bottom three at all because, you know, they have a quality squad. Yes. Now, the questions are just always aimed at the coaching, whether it's always been that good, especially this squad. I feel like they they have England's number one in post. They have two yes. great defenders in Cody. Their midfield looks strong even now with Ganagay, and they have a great forward line. So it all just comes down to the coaching. Yes. And uh, I think that's where they'll really, really suffer from because Lampard has never really been at the top. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we are also discussed. That is actually the first game that has actually kicked off here in the early kick of Everton versus Liverpool. The Merseyside derby, one of the biggest derbies in the whole world. But uh, also the transfer window came to the end on Thursday. Some big transfers that you have uh, seen also all throughout the transfer window. Liverpool... No major signings, but they lost one of their key players in Sadio Mane. I think for them, they can never really replace Mane. Yes. Because you, you look at the people they have right now at the front. You know, Nunes is totally different from Mane. Yes. Cavallo is still young. And they also went ahead and signed Arthur for the midfield. I feel like they should have gone and got a world-class winger or a world-class forward to fill in who yes. has the similarities to money because you know their style is really dependent on that type of player yeah and for him to finish so for now uh salah will have to do the job famino has been in great uh, form mm -hmm. the past uh, since the season started i think he'll continue but now you know yeah as the season progresses and you start missing money yeah. it's when liverpool will hurt yeah. well it's a, a, a big one for them there for liverpool and Everton, they also got Arthur from Juventus to come on, on to that midfield yeah. to play alongside Fabino, Thiago Alcantara. Where, where do you see Liverpool finishing this season? Uh, I still put them up there in the top four, but yeah. I, I will know. I, I think they won't be champions because uh -huh. of uh, the poor start of the season. Yes. City already have a gap on them, but I think uh, they sh still should be able to finish in the top four because of the quality. Yeah. And at the moment, they also have injuries. So once everyone is back, I think we'll see their best. Well, it's a big game there. Everton versus Liverpool currently going on six minutes into that game. We'll be giving you the results here on the fans. On at 5 p.m., we've got the goal rush kick of their Brentford leads. Good start for Brentford. Four goals against Manchester United. Lost to Liverpool, yes. But it is a season where they have also stamping their stay in the mm -hmm. Premier League. Yeah, it is a season, and it's also a season where they are they are more accustomed to the how the teams play. Yes, you know they they know what they are playing for because you know their first season maybe they just say let's survive, but right now yes. maybe they want to get above mid table into eighth, ninth, or somewhere yeah. there. So they have a, a target set, and again also for Leeds, uh, they had a poor season last season. They just survived uh -huh. a relegation by the Whisker. Yeah, but they've started great this season. Rodrigo has been playing well, and. Uh, 
I think that's a very good game to watch. Yeah. But I see Brentford carrying the day. What's a big one there for Brentford? But Leeds is not a walk in the park. Three no, not... goals against Chelsea. Yeah. Good start for them in the Premier League. Also, it's, it's not a walk in the park for Brentford against Leeds. Yeah, it's not a walk in the park. Yeah. But I, I just feel like Brentford have a certain edge, especially in the finishing and in the forward line. Yes. They have a certain edge that Leeds currently lack. And I, I also think it was a poor move for Leeds to let yeah. go of Dan James. Because you know yeah. of his speed and and how the club itself has have, have wanted him for many years and when they've got him they haven't used him that well and yes. they've just released him on loan to Fulham so I think for their forward line which right now is doing okay I think they'll miss James and his speed. Well, one game that I'm actually following up and it's a big clash that we'll be following up to see how it actually pans out will be Chelsea against West Ham. Not a good start for Thomas Tuchel this season. A draw against Tottenham, a lose against Leeds, and now is playing West Ham. One of the best performers from last season. Yes, yes, they are playing a West Ham side which has just recently signed uh, Lucas Paqueta in that yes. midfield. So it will be a really, really good game. Whether he plays or not, you know, West Ham will not go down without a fight. You can ask uh, Tottenham during the, the week, you know. <laughs> Moyes has a way to get a dogged performance yes. out of these players. Yeah. And I think Chelsea right now are in a bad spot yeah. because uh, they, 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 have, they have lacked a finisher for the past season, even the season before, and now they are really lacking a finisher because they do not score many goals. Yeah. Their midfielders are not registering assists or goals. So, yeah. you know... They, they look really defensive, just a total defensive side at the moment. You look at the behavior of uh, Thomas Tuchel in the, in the last games. You look at his behavior against Tottenham, he's the one who instigated uh, that. And you look at his behavior against Leeds, the way he went on against the referee. Is it, does it look like he's trying to get attention away from his team not performing well to try to put attention on to himself? I, I think it's just the frustrations are really yes. getting to him right now because I don't think they made good signings, you know, uh -huh. they, they've always had, I think their defence was still okay. Yeah. And I think that's getting to him because he's, he's not, go, he never got the players he wanted yes. during the, you know, the way that snatched up by Barcelona or Man United, you know. Yeah. So he, he, the frustrations really got to him. He, yeah. With the window being closed now, I think he should settle, accept the squad he has and try to to mount because many people will put them to finish in the top four but with the way they are playing yeah. even going into the West Ham game they people are it, it looks 50 50 at the moment you know yeah. so they should really settle and uh, try to mount their climb up to the top four well it's a big one for them there and we'll be seeing how they actually be performing there for Chelsea West Ham uh, West Ham not actually started very well in the league but it's a team that you'll be sure that David Moyes will put a very good spirited fight against Chelsea. Then one game that will be following up, young good managers that are coming up will be Newcastle versus Crystal Palace. Both of them lost during the midweek fixtures. Crystal Palace lost 4-2 to Manchester City. Newcastle also lost 2-1 there to Liverpool. There's a, a test of seeing how these two teams play, Newcastle and Crystal Palace. Who do you think will come on top? I think Palace have a really, really great style of playing at the moment. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, we saw against City, even though the the comeback came, that they are not totally dependent on Zaha for goals. They can still score different types of goals from set piece and all. Yeah. But then again, Newcastle, you you look at the the squad, the squad that played at Anfield did not have their big hitters even at the from the centre backs. You know, yes. Saint Maximin was not there, Bruno Guimaraes was not there, Sven Botman was not there, but they still managed to get a performance out of players who will regularly play if those were there, if those names were there. So yeah. that's a really tough game. Uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a great watch. I'd just say that. So yeah. mostly I think Newcastle might carry the day. Well, Newcastle there playing, we'll be seeing how Maxim will be performing in that. He has had a really good start for Newcastle. Mm -hmm. And also Wilfred Zaha on the other side. Also another game, it will be a bit of a championship derby that started uh, in the championship, but now they're in the Premier League. Nottingham Forest versus Bournemouth. Do you see Bournemouth getting their first uh, three points in the Premier League? I think it's really tough for all that they are going through. Yeah. You know, they just dismissed their manager and I think their manager was a bit right. Yes. Because you look at, they came, the teams that followed them into the Premier League, Fulham yeah. and uh, Nottingham themselves, you know, the, the, the amount of signings, the amount of change that they've tried to, to put in yeah. their squad and for him, 
you know he the manager was really vocal that they need quality and uh, after that he got the sack so yes. i'm not really sure whether the squad is in the right uh, mental space to go into this game but nottingham you know they've had a great a really really unique Yes. Transfer window signing more than 20, 20 players. players. 20, yeah, so <laughs> Actually, that's, that's what really I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, mm. Mm, Bournemouth, who do you see coming? Can we see someone like uh, Sean Dyke taking over at Bournemouth? Small budget, but usually performs. He performed really well with Burnley. I think someone like Sean Dyche might be a great move because, you know, yeah. after con con conceding all those goals against Liverpool and City, you know, you might want yes. to bring a bit of defensive stability, not yeah. to leak more goals because your goal difference is already damaged. So, yes. Sean Dyche, you know, he, he knows how to properly organise a, a defensive structure. You know, he's done it at Burnley numerous times against City, against yes. Liverpool. So, it won't be anything new to him. But then again, he also has the experience of, of leading a team mm -hmm. to the top half of the Premier League. So yes. He, it might be a great move for Sean Dyche, for them to go for Sean Dyche. Well, we'll be seeing how that game goes. 13 minutes in Everton, their Liverpool is still 0 0 in that match. We're talking about some of the games that will be coming away at 5 pm. Also, got Tottenham versus Fulham there, the big game there. Tottenham win, or oh, Marco Silva can do some magic there and get a win against uh, Conte. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, the, the past, uh, even the whole season, how Fulham have been performing, they've yes. been playing really, really well. They've been scoring goals. Mitrovic looks to be on fire. He looks yes. to be latching on to all crosses, all, all cutbacks he's scoring. But you know, Tottenham have, have this dogged desire to, to play a type of foot, contest type of football. Yes. You look at how they play, how they really want to see things through. And once they score, it's hard for you to come back to the game because he just shuts all areas where you can attack from you know he had the bisuma is thrown into the game so yes. it's become really hard for you to score but fulham after their performance against arsenal i wouldn't be shocked if they if they can get something against tottenham well it's a big one there between tottenham and uh, fulham is a big game that we'll be watching Wolves southampton is also another big game there southampton big win against chelsea in midweek against holes can they make it two games two game win yeah, I think Southampton, you know, seeing how they've started the season, you know, you look yeah. at the players they've signed and you look at the guys like Lavia and Pella Kocha, the centre-back, I think they've really done great signings. Yes. And I think that's something that will help them uh, stay, stay or climb up further in the league than last season. Yes. In this particular game, I think uh, Wolves should be able to get past Southampton because they are also, you know, Wolves are a, have become a culture team. People are used to Wolves yes. being part of... The, 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 the next teams after the big six, so yeah. they should uh, manage their affairs well and get get into stride because time is going for Wolves and I think uh, they will really, really need these three points more than Southampton. Do. Well, it's a big one there and we'll be following that, but uh, finishing off the day, there will be Aston Villa versus uh, Manchester City. I have a prediction that Steven Gerrard might not see off this season with Aston Villa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's already started. He's on a poor run. Yeah. He's on a very poor run, and he doesn't seem to like have to to have gotten the team to play yes. uh, yeah. any type of football. You know, yeah. if you look at how they play, you know, it's it, it just looks basic. There, there is no nothing more. Even under D Dean Smith, I think Villa looked yes. a bit better. And uh, you have to keep in mind that there are signings that have been brought in, mm -hmm. so he's under a lot immense pressure to get results, and which. I think it's the it's the worst time for him to be playing against City with Haaland yeah. high flying. So he might be the next one after Scott Parker to leave, but it's it remains to be seen. Yeah. Very likely, very likely yeah. that uh, he might actually be going for that one. But Manchester City, yeah. Aaron Haaland has been good to be the best signing for mm. Manchester City at the moment. Nine goals, I think, three games. That's a mm. big one for Manchester City. That's a big one, yeah. yeah. And also now, you know, aside from playing the teams they've played, you know, people yeah. want to really see him in the big, in the bigger challenges, you yes. know, see Liverpool, United, Arsenal. People want to see him there because, you know, yeah. he's, we knew he's going to score a certain amount of goals, we yeah. knew. But now the question was, can he do it on against the big six? Because, you know, yeah. City playing Nottingham, you know, what to expect. But when they meet Liverpool, when they meet Chelsea, yes. that's when people want to see what the City players have. Because the thing that wasted them last season is they couldn't get past the big games in the big teams, you know. Madrid, yeah. each time they met Liverpool, you know, it was a bit hard for them. Yes. You know, Arsenal made it hard for them. So people want to see that about City more. 
well, it's a big one. It's a big clash for them there, and we'll be seeing how they are going to play. But uh, Manchester City, Aston Villa will be finishing over there. But the transfer window also came to an end. And for you, who, who was the biggest winner in the transfer window? Uh, I'd say City. Yes. I'd say City because, you know, they got Haaland uh -huh. from Dortmund. And as they closed the window, they also got Manu Akanji, who's, who has been a great defender for Dortmund. Yes. I think those are good signings for them. Yeah. You also have to keep in mind that Alvarez has finally joined them and is playing with them. Uh -huh. And also on the bench somewhere, there's Calvin Phillips. So yes. they have a really, really, they've bolstered their squad with quality players. Yeah. But then again, you look at Arsenal and how they've signed uh -huh. yes. Gabriel Jesus has, has uh -huh. really shown for them. And Saliba coming back uh -huh. is also a good move. But then, and also this Man United because yes. they have brought in, they've used a lot of money to yeah. bring in players in different departments. At least they've signed, a, in the key areas, they've signed a goalkeeper, they've signed a defender, they've signed a midfielder, they've signed a forward who are world class. So. Yeah. They, they have signed actually two defenders in Martinez and Malaysia. Yeah. Casemiro coming on to that midfield yeah. and also a forward of Anthony. Yeah. Uh, is this a team that Ten Hag now can use for a Premier League challenge this season? Uh, for, for, I think for this season it will be so hard for, yeah. for him to challenge for the Premier League, maybe the Cups. Yeah. But what I think he can do with this squad at the moment is, is sh implement his playing style completely and, and yes. change Man United how they've been playing the past seasons because they've got players with good mentality right now in the squad if they've got runners up front and even in defense they've got people who want to, who play with a lot of passion so it's yeah. it's a really great mix of experience and new talent that yes. that he will relish in in training because you know when his style clicks it's one of yes. the best in the world one touch football mm -hmm. fast play but i think this season it will be just about him really giving this team man united an identity well, it's a big one there for Manchester United against Arsenal tomorrow. Who do you think will come on top? It's a tough game because it's at Old Trafford. I don't think uh, Man United will want to get beat at, by Arsenal at Old yes. Trafford, you know. And also, Arsenal are in high-flying form, you know. The only unbeaten team in... Uh, there are only three unbeaten teams in the top five leagues. It's Arsenal, Real yes. and, uh, and Betis who have won all their games. So yeah. it will be a really, really tough tough game for United. Yeah. Jesus has been firing, Odegaard has been looking really great. Yes. It's a tough one to call, but <laughs> you know, I yeah. think I think a draw, if you look at past seasons at yes. Old Trafford, Arsenal versus Man United, it's yeah. always been a draw or a slender win for uh -huh. wh whichever. Yeah. So I think a draw is the most likely result. Well, it's a big one there. We'll be following up to see how it's actually be panning there between Manchester United and Arsenal. But also we've got Brighton Leicester tomorrow. It's a shaky start for Leicester this season. And even top 10 will be a big hurdle for them this season. Yeah, it will be a big hurdle for them, you know. If you look at their team, they have no new signings. And people yes. say Leicester, they, they only brought in a centre-back later on, but they have no signings when you look at the pitch you can say Leicester are the next best thing after the big six you know they've even finished in the in the, in the top six for a couple of seasons in a row but yes. if you look at them right now they do not have that squad to to, to challenge any yes. of the t before they could challenge even the top four but right now they, are, yes. they look far off that because you look at they have an aging far line a forward line Ian yes. is not really world class. You look yeah. at their defense, they, they don't have that proper losing for Fana, you know, it's a huge hit, mm -hmm. but they do not have a re proper replacement for him. Yeah. Their midfielders, uh, you know, Tillemans is always 50 50. You don't know whether he'll leave or whether he'll stay. So I think they really needed this window to sign. And uh, yes. aside from Gerard, I think Brendan Roger, Rogers is a guy who you should really look at as the next uh, manager to be sacked. Yes. But on the other hand, Brighton, what a start to their season. It's a very, very good start uh, for the season. Graham Potter there with Brighton. It's still uh, it's one team that came from the championship and has really stamped their stay yeah. in the Premier League. And especially with Graham Potter, they've started playing beautiful football because yes. they know how to keep the ball and they always score yeah. beautiful goals. So I think that is something that has really helped them because whichever team they play, Brighton yeah. always seem to want to play how Brighton wants to play. They are yes. not, even if it's City or even if it's, you, you saw them against United, they wanted yeah. to keep the ball even at Old Trafford. And that's yeah. something 
even with United not at its best, not yeah. many teams do. So for Brighton, it's a great start the season. Yeah. And I, I think for Leicester visit, visiting them, that will, be, that will be tough on Leicester, but you never know to expect in football. Well, it's a big one there for the Premier League. Some of the matches that we are actually following up at the moment there, mm -hmm. Everton versus uh, mm -hmm. Liverpool, that uh, they are actually playing at the moment. We're just looking at uh, the scores to see how they are actually coming out uh, between uh, Everton and uh, Liverpool. And some of the matches that we are actually following up will be also looking at uh, Chelsea West. I mean, that game 22 minutes in. And uh, they still score less between Everton and Liverpool. Bradford Leeds will be coming away. Chelsea will be playing home to West Ham, Newcastle, Palace, Nottingham Forest, Bournemouth, Tottenham will be playing home to Fulham. Wolves also will be playing home to Southampton. Then Steven Gerrard will be playing home to Pep Guardiola in the latest kickoff of the league. We are finishing up the show, and uh, what is your greatest rivalry between Arsenal and uh, Manchester United? So, what is the biggest game you ever watched and still stuck to your mind till today? I think uh, the, 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 the best game I've watched was in, I think it was 2018 or yes. 2017, yeah, when uh, Man United are actually playing at the Emirates, and you yes. know, they won 3 1, but the performance by De Gea that day was, was really amazing. You know? yes. Nothing could get past him. Uh -huh. And it was that was one of the best games. But if if I am to pick one yeah. that will come to memory, yes, up will be the the rivalry between Keane and Vieira. Yeah, it's always <laughs> you always see it even before even as we as people are building up this match to yes. this on Sunday, mm -hmm. you always have that Vieira and Keane clip somewhere. So that was a time when Man United and Arsenal were really dominant, and they really they were they were the Premier League. You yes. always wanted to watch it as the game. Yeah. So. Well. Thanks a lot, uh, Ken Andrews here for the touchline. That's where we come to the end of the touchline. But we leave you with uh, some of the greatest uh, moments of the Premier League uh, clash between Arsenal and Manchester United, considering that it will be a big game tomorrow between Manchester United and Arsenal. I'm Robert Osoro. For everyone who has made this broadcast a success, we say thank you and good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your viewing here on Y254 and enjoy the greatest memories and reverie between Manchester and Arsenal.